A social worker in Ohio already charged with having sex with a 13-year-old boy is in more legal trouble. The boy and his mom are now suing Peyton Shires and her former employee, and that suit has some explosive allegations. Shires used to work at National Youth Advocate Program, a nonprofit that offers services to children and families, and that's where she met this boy. She was charged last month on her 24th birthday, no less, with unlawful sexual conduct. She posted bail and she was released, but a judge later revoked her bail after the boy and his mom reported that she threatened them. The lawsuit has new details about that threat. It claims Shires actually went to the boy's home that he shared with his mother with a gun and fired a shot. The suit claims the boy's mother saw Shires on her front porch with the gun on her home video system. Shires also threatened to take her own life and claimed the boy's mother ruined her life. Shires is in jail in Columbus. A case management conference for that civil suit is scheduled for March of next year. I'm Anjanette Levy. It's Monday, and this is Crime Fix, Law and Crime's rundown of the top stories in the world of crime. Police say they've finally caught a fugitive who murdered his pregnant girlfriend and stuffed her body in a suitcase. Jose Dominguez Garcia is locked up for the murder of Rosalie Shavira Rodriguez. She was last seen alive in July of 2020, working at a restaurant in Wisconsin. Police in Missouri say their license plate readers caught a car with a stolen plate on camera. When they stopped that driver, he gave them multiple IDs and multiple names, but they found out he was Dominguez Garcia and was wanted in Chippewa County, Wisconsin. That's where authorities say they found Rodriguez's body stuffed into a purple suitcase and left on a vacant farm. At a doctor's appointment before she went missing, Rodriguez learned she was seven weeks pregnant. Her ex is charged with intentional homicide, intentional homicide of an unborn child, and hiding a corpse. Another body, this time found dismembered and stuffed in a car trunk. Deputies in Citrus County, Florida, made the horrifying discovery on Thanksgiving Day. Deputies say the victim, 67-year-old James Banks, was stuffed inside the trunk of his own car, and the suspect is 75-year-old Jonathan Dimmick Sr. Apparently, he shot himself in the abdomen after he committed the crime. Responding officers say they found a large butcher knife in the backyard of a home that was covered in blood, as well as drag marks on the ground. They found the alleged shooter in the living room of the home alive, but with that gunshot wound to his stomach. Dimmick later died at the hospital. Deputies have not revealed how the men knew each other or a motive. Authorities in Nebraska also had to deal with a disturbing case on Thanksgiving. Police in Omaha say Will McDonald was taken into custody Thursday night after apparently killing his 10-year-old son in front of several people. Kendrick McDonald died at the hospital from a single gunshot wound. Police did not confirm exactly who else was at the family home when Kendrick was shot, but they said other children were there. On top of the charge of criminal homicide, McDonald wasn't allowed to have a gun at all because he's a convicted felon. So he's also charged with possession of a firearm by a prohibited person. Omaha police are still investigating the motive, but a GoFundMe page has been set up by a family friend and it indicates this might have been an accident. Derek Chauvin, you probably remember him. He's that former Minneapolis police officer who's serving time for the death of George Floyd. He's actually recovering after being stabbed in federal prison. Chauvin's been serving time at the federal prison in Tucson for Floyd's death. And the Associated Press reports that he was stabbed on Wednesday of last week and seriously injured, but is expected to survive. Chauvin's stabbing is the latest incident where a high-profile inmate was injured or died while in the custody of the Bureau of Prisons. Larry Nasser, who sexually assaulted teenage gymnasts in his care, was stabbed last year. And Unabomber Ted Kaczynski died by suicide in his cell. And who can forget Jeffrey Epstein? He is said to have hanged himself in a federal jail in 2019. Millions saw Derek Chauvin kneel on Floyd's neck on body camera video for nine minutes as he tried to take him into custody in May of 2020. Chauvin spoke at his sentencing on the state charges in 2021. I uh, do want to give my condolences to the Floyd family. Chauvin's been incarcerated at FCI Tucson. The prison's website actually says that visitation is suspended until further notice. There are many questions about how another inmate was actually able to get close to Chauvin. His former lawyer had said that he should be isolated for his own protection. Chauvin's been trying to get his federal conviction overturned, arguing he couldn't get a fair trial. 
He's serving more than 20 years on federal and state charges. Three other officers involved in Floyd's arrest and death are serving less time for not helping Floyd. In another high profile case, this one, a double murder in Delphi, Indiana, a man is accused of leaking graphic crime scene photos that were splashed all over YouTube. 41-year-old Mitchell Westerman faces a misdemeanor count of conversion. According to court documents, Westerman used to work for defense attorney Andrew Baldwin, who used to represent Richard Allen. Allen is accused of murdering Abby Williams and Liberty German near a railroad trestle on Valentine's Day in 2017. The leak of the crime scene photos has caused absolute chaos in Allen's case. First, Westerman has admitted in an affidavit that he took the photos while visiting Baldwin and then passed them along to a man in Indiana. That man then gave the photos to a podcast. The man in Indiana actually took his own life after police questioned him about the leak. That leak led to Richard Allen's attorneys, Baldwin and Brad Rossi, being removed from the case. Earlier this afternoon, the defense attorneys have withdrawn their representation of Mr. Allen. That was Judge Francis Gall at a hearing earlier this month. Now Baldwin and Rossi claim Judge Gall actually kicked them off the case. The lawyers are taking their case to represent Allen free of charge to the Indiana Supreme Court. Baldwin and Rossi want a new judge. The Indiana Supreme Court has asked her for information regarding some of the decisions she's made about this case. Allen has pleaded not guilty to Libby and Abby's murders. Prosecutors have said in the past that Allen actually confessed to his wife on a jail phone call. Allen has lost a considerable amount of weight since his arrest and claims his rights are being violated by his treatment at a prison where he is housed. Typically, inmates who haven't been convicted are kept in county jails, but not in this case. A man in Nevada says he's not really a criminal, despite being accused of torturing, raping, and beating a woman over a period of two days. Las Vegas Metro Police took Edward Kim into custody earlier this month. An investigation started after firefighters found a woman covered in wounds. When questioned by police, the Las Vegas Review Journal said Kim said he and the woman were just messing around. And then he said, I'm not really a criminal and stop talking. Kim will be back in court next week. In Ohio, the mother who admitted plotting the murders of eight members of one family wants new lawyers, claiming she doesn't trust her current male attorneys. Angela Wagner has pleaded guilty to several charges related to the 2016 murders of eight members of the Roden and Gilly families. The eight were all shot in the head, most as they slept. For her part in the Pike County Massacre, Angela got a pretty lenient sentence for her plea. She'll get out after serving just 30 years, while her youngest son, Jake, received eight life sentences after admitting to shooting five of the victims. Angela Wagner's written two letters to the judge since September, asking for two female public defenders to be assigned to her case. It's a curious request, since she's already pleaded guilty and has fulfilled at least part of her plea agreement by testifying against her oldest son, George Wagner IV. George was found guilty of helping with the murders last November. He's serving eight life sentences. Angela Wagner is required to testify against her husband, Billy Wagner, when his trial starts next year. In Billy Wagner's case, the judge has denied his request for a change of venue, but the judge said Wagner can actually renew that motion at a later time if they find during jury selection that they can't find an impartial jury in Pike County. Angela and Jake have admitted they murdered the Rodens so they could have sole custody of a little girl that Jake shared with Hannah Mae Roden. The shooting at a Walmart in Ohio that wounded four people may have actually been racially motivated. Benjamin Charles Jones walked into the Beaver Creek store outside of Dayton nearly a week ago and started shooting before turning the gun on himself. Body camera footage from officers showed them entering the store to find Jones. The FBI, which is assisting with this investigation, put out a statement saying Jones's journal writings show he may have been motivated in part by ideology that is violent and racially motivated. The investigation is still ongoing. At last check, the four people who were wounded are expected to survive. Another business rocked by a crime spree, but this one under very different circumstances. A woman who worked at a Taco Bell in California says her store's Christmas party got so out of control, she had no choice but to report it to HR. 
Elena Bechiam says her store's 2022 Christmas party involved copious amounts of alcohol that led to at least one of the employees having sex with his wife in front of everybody. The store's manager had reportedly covered the windows of the restaurant as well as the store's surveillance cameras. After Betchiam made her report, several people were fired. But Betchiam has now filed a lawsuit saying her co-workers actually threatened her for reporting the party. She says instead of those employees being punished, she was transferred to a new location. Betchiam alleges discrimination, sexual harassment, retaliation, and labor violations in her lawsuit. Disgraced South Carolina attorney Alec Murdoch will be formally sentenced in state court tomorrow for stealing millions of dollars from clients and his law firm. Murdoch pleaded guilty to 22 counts of the more than 100 he faced in state court earlier this month. All that has been stated up to this point, um, how do you plead? I plead guilty, Your Honor. All right. While Murdoch's attorneys and the state agreed to a 27-year sentence, Judge Clifton Newman has to accept that plea agreement. Murdoch's victims are expected to make statements in court. Law and Crime will be there, and we will bring you live coverage on our YouTube channel. And finally, an alleged car thief didn't get away with her crime after she tried to pass off a handwritten license plate as a real one. Can you believe it? Angel Bolton was arrested north of San Francisco on Friday. Police posted a photo of her license plate on Facebook. It's just a white piece of paper with some numbers and letters on it. In their post, police called it beautifully handwritten, but discovered the car had been reported stolen. And get this, the fake plate was actually expired. The registration date written on the paper says it expired in January of this year. Bolton was taken into custody without incident. You just can't make some of this stuff up. And that's it for your crime fix on this Monday, November 27th of 2023. I'm Anjanette Levy. I'll see you tomorrow.